Good morning. Between Palm Sunday and Easter, we are called to consider Jesus' road to the cross. On Monday, Thursday, we remember Jesus washed the disciples' feet and shared his last supper with them. Good Friday, we remember his betrayal, trial, and crucifixion. Holy Saturday is the day that Jesus lay in the tomb. But as a pastor, I admit, I don't think much of the journey on Monday through Wednesday. I'm so busy getting ready for the three services and preparing my ingredients for my soup for Thursday night supper, but the calendar has scriptures with chunks of the story from Jesus' last week of life on every day this week. The gospel lesson for Wednesday of Holy Week comes from John 13. I want to share with you just a couple of verses from that reading. Listen to John 13, 21 and 22. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. Then it goes on to have Jesus named Judas as his betrayer, but I want to stop here before we get there. There are two things that strike me here. One, Jesus knew what was about to happen. He knew that one of his beloved, hand-chosen disciples was going to betray him. After all they'd been through together, after all of the teaching and healing and just living together as family, one of these closest to him was going to turn him over to be crucified. How horrible is that? Imagine one of your closest friends or even a sister or a brother completely betraying you. Now, we're not talking getting a promotion that should have been yours or telling a secret that they promised to keep, not even cheating on you with your significant other. We're talking setting you up to be arrested, tortured, and put to death for a crime you didn't commit. Jesus knew this was going to happen, and he knew who was going to do it. And still, Jesus washed Judas's feet. He shared his last meal on earth with him. Jesus still loved him in spite of knowing what he would do. Jesus still loved him anyway. Think about how hard it is to still love someone who just talked about you behind your back. Then try to imagine Jesus still loving Judas, knowing what suffering his betrayal would cause. The second thing that occurred to me was that all 12 disciples thought it could have been them. Their teacher, leader, friend, and brother, with whom they had spent every moment of the last three years, was clearly very upset. The one who calmed the storm when you were afraid, showed you what God was like. The one whom you called Messiah, the son of the living God, was clearly troubled and declared to you that one of you would betray him. What is their response? Uh Uh-oh. Is he talking about me? Even his closest disciples think it could be them. In the verse that follows that I didn't read, Peter elbows John and says, ask him who it is. Ask him who it is. Jesus' closest disciples know how they have failed him in the past. They remember how often he's had to correct them. And their first thought is his pronouncement is, Oh, please don't let it be me who fails him this time. They love him. They would follow Jesus anywhere, and yet they still realize that they can still screw up. On this Wednesday of Holy Week, Jesus tells us that someone is going to betray him. Are we sitting here smug, thinking, well, it must be someone else, and looking around at our brothers and sisters for signs of guilt? Or do you realize deep in your heart You failed Jesus in the past and pray, dear Lord, please don't let it be me. That's what Holy Week is about. Realizing how much we have sinned and fallen short. The cross was because of our sins and failures so that we could be forgiven. But the amazing part is that we are forgiven. And Jesus still loves us in spite of it all. When we remember Jesus' last supper with his disciples tomorrow night, he will be there, ready to wash our feet, ready to serve us. 
because we are beloved. Although we are remembering sad and painful things the next few days as we approach Easter, never forget the good news. Jesus went to the cross in love for you and in love for me. Jesus went to the cross because God so loved the world. Have a blessed week.